Jesus is asking a lot from us. You imagine if you were in the, in the sea and there was a great storm and waves were crashing over the boat and um, this was evening. It's at night, it's dark. That's a, can you imagine something more terrifying? Being on the sea where it's dark and the, the, the sea might be miles deep and, and uh, waves crashing over and you think the, whole, the boat's gonna crash and you're gonna drown. And Jesus says, why are you terrified? Wouldn't you be? Wouldn't you be terrified? And Jesus is saying, don't be terrified. This is what he's asking us to be like. He's asking us to be so strong and so full of faith that God's going to save you from some crashing storm. What about an earthquake? What if you're, you know, when you're in a burning house? What if you're in whatever kind of crisis you're in? You need to be so strong in faith that that doesn't scare you. You have to be that courageous in trusting in God and full of love for your neighbor who you might have to protect and save, that you're not afraid. Our Lord's asking heroism like this kind of, this kind of heroism, and we, ha we should have that. We should have that kind of faith, and if we don't, it's our own fault because we don't have faith. We didn't, we didn't establish that kind of faith through through prayer and through living according to the teachings of Jesus. Jesus said, so you don't put into practice my teachings, you're like a house built on sand that is blown away by the first strong wind. And that's, isn't that so true? If you don't pray, if you don't pray, the least crisis that's gonna come is gonna shake your faith, it's gonna make you miserable, it's gonna make you worried and afraid. If we, live a, if we live a natural life, everything is just uh, what happens to us. Whatever happens to us during the day, oh, I'm, I'm, totally at, I'm totally at the mercy of what this world brings to me, what this world gives to me, whatever happens. I may trip and fall, I may get in a car accident, I may meet somebody who treats me badly or abuses me or shoots me or you know, it's, everything is by chance, and I've got to worry because I don't know what's going to happen. It's just by chance, things can happen, and so I can worry for the rest of my life and live that way. Do you want to live that way? Or to know, to know that God's guiding my day. God, God is guiding what's going to happen to me. Do you remember in the Old Testament, Maccabees, Judas Maccabees? He was fighting all these wars, and he was at the head of the battle. He was the one charging like a lion, they said. He was like a lion. He was so courageous. He would go on his own with a small band and conquer thousands of his enemies. And they say that his guardian angel protected him. The, the, the arrows missed him. The sword thrusts against him missed him. And he had the strength to, to plow through his enemies because he trusted in God. He trusted in God. You imagine David, imagine being David and Goli against Goliath. How do, you, how do you go up against somebody like that when David, nobody, everybody else was afraid. Nobody would go and challenge Goliath. Not even the king, perhaps. Everybody was afraid. And David said, I'll do it. I'll do it. How did he do it? He'd never fought, never fought in the war before because he trusted in God so strongly. He was probably a man of deep prayer because he was a shepherd and he spent a lot of time praying when he's taking care of the shepherds. He was probably alone. He said, I'll do it. And I'll do it even without um, armor because I can't, I'm not used to this stuff. He tried to put armor on him. He wouldn't do it. He just grabbed the stone from the Wadi River, and he went out with a basket of uh, stones and a sling. He said, I will do it. I am not afraid. And the Goliath, said, uh, Goliath said to him, I'm, go I'm going to cut your head off, and I'm going to leave you here for the birds of the sky to devour. And he said, no, you're not, because you're blaspheming my God. I'm going to do that to you. I'm going to cut your head off and leave you for the animals to devour. And that's what happened. 
He swung his sling, trusting that God would guide the stone, hit him in the forehead whenever, when he had armor everywhere else in his body. He trusted in God, and he killed the enemy. What, what strength, what fearlessness, what faith David had. And we're called to have the same faith that no matter what happens in our life, no matter who we meet, no matter what our crises and storms come upon us, we shouldn't even be afraid. And if you are, because it's probably because you're not praying enough, you're not putting to practice the teachings of God. The further we drift from God, the more fearful we're going to be what happens to us in our life, because we're living by whatever chance things happen to us. And we don't even have to. We can trust that God's going to guide our steps throughout the day, all day long. And never be afraid. Never be afraid. Because God's going to help us through any trials and dangers. We can live a life of courage and strength. We can, um, you know, uh, scale the walls and conquer the enemy. And, uh, you know, we have to live a life of, a life of, of offense not defense. Whatever happens to me, I'm afraid. You know, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, instead of walking straight towards whatever God puts in our path, and we will handle it because God will give us the strength and the intelligence and the prudence and direct our steps and he'll, you know, divert the arrows from us and, you know, we will come unscathed to the end to the other side. You know, maybe we'll get an arrow like Joan of Arc did. You know, uh, it wasn't easy for her to storm the castles either. She would be the one in the front of the army. And, you, you know, you can't say, oh, she knew that she was never going to get hurt. Jesus allowed her to get shot by an arrow once, and she pulled it out herself. Right in, the, right in her chest, she pulled the arrow out herself. So she was not afraid to get hurt, and she led the armies too. Not that everything's a fight and a battle, but, you know, many other different kinds of things are going to happen to us, and we need to embrace them oh, offensive, offensively, accept every challenge that happens to us through prayer, through union with God, through constantly thinking about God, and trying to do his will, to do what he wants us to do, to have the, um, um, the faith to put into practice his, his teachings and his virtues and his, be obedient to his commandments. And God's going to guide everything that we do, everything that we do. And he wants us to have a strong faith, a really, really strong faith. Otherwise, how can you face Goliath? How can you not be afraid when the storms come? Only if you have a very strong faith. Very, very strong faith. Jesus is asking that from us. He's asking from us a strong love, not just a little love, not just a little love for your neighbor, but to a strong love for your neighbor where you will die for them, where you will love even your, neighbor, your enemies. He's asking for us a lot, not just a little, not the minimum, but our whole lives, our whole heart, our whole faith. And do you want that? You know, that's living life to the full. If you want that, if you strive for that, you'll get it. You know, if you want to live a mediocre life, you're going to live a fearful life. You're going to be full of anxieties, full of worries, full of what, whatever. It's not going to be full of God because you didn't establish a strong faith you know, you want a strong faith, a foundation, deep and strong, that will withstand everything. So we ask Our Lady to help us to have that, to establish that in our, in our lives, our spiritual lives, and to, uh, you know, radiate that to, to others, teach other, teach that to others, set that example for others.